Okay, good morning. Um, so with this, uh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. So I would like to present uh, a few studies, m mainly uh, uh, a summary of um, some thoughts and discussions um, we had at CERN in December, they were mainly with Alan Blondell, and then a few thoughts I have done later here in January. Um, on the uh, luminosity measurement. So um, I just remind us that the luminosity is determined by a Baba scattering, so it's just the number of events divided by the theoretical cross section. And the theoretical, well, so uh, of course, uh, the Baba scattering uh, elastic, uh, a plus or minus scattering, is dominated by the T channel photon exchange and the uh, cross-section formula is there. So um, it depends on one over theta min squared, since theta min is uh, considerably smaller than theta max normally. So, so uh, you have an, a very dramatic dependence on the minimum scattering angle, which of course means that if you want a sizable cross-section, you, you want this theta min to be small. But to get a precise cross-section, you also need it to be extremely precisely known. Um, so the way this is done, or has been done at LEP and other accelerators, is that you measure this cross-section in a symmetric uh, assembly of two uh, detectors centered around the beam line. So that is normally at LEP, we just said we center them around the beam line. But now we have two beam lines. We have a E plus beam line and an E minus beam line. Uh, and they are, in our current way of thinking, uh, uh, they have an angle of 30 milliradians between them. And if you look very carefully at this sketch here, you'll see that I have actually centered uh, these luminosity monitors around the exit beam. So on this side, it's, uh, the assembly is centered around the red beam and on this side around the uh, blue beam, the outgoing beam. And what we call the, uh, what Alain uh, referred to before, the 100 milliradian opening, is of course around the center, well not of course, but it's around the, the center of the detector, and the detector will be centered, uh, the main detector will be centered around the, uh, the mean of these two directions, so to say. So, in this picture here, well, I'll come, I'll, this will be much clearer later, uh, the luminosity monitors are not centered in the real detector system, or in the global detector system. Um, and then, um, to measure a luminosity very precise, you, don't, you want to be independent to uh, beam parameters. That is, that the interaction point here in the middle could shift a little bit in Z. It could shift in the, uh, in the radial direction. And that is, uh, can be uh, fixed by defining tight and loose fiducial uh, volumes and then require that the electron is inside the tight fiducial volume. On the other side, you can be in the loose or loose tight. That makes you insensitive to first order uh, beam parameters, shift in beam parameters. Okay. Um, so we so I so what 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 one uses for this is um, the kind of detectors you want a very dense detector. Uh, so uh, what was used in the second generation of lab. Uh, Luminosity monitors were um, tungsten silicon detectors, and they have a Molière radius. Well, tungsten has a Molière radius of, of about one centimeters. Um, now you you want some you you need some space also for the silicon. So perhaps in practice, the Molière radius of the, the detectors as a whole becomes a little bit larger. But what is important is that you cannot, you should not define your fiducial volume closer to the border of the detector than one Molière radius, because then you can't really measure the energy precisely. 
So that gives some limitations on how close you can get to the beam line with your fiducial volume. Um, then, so yeah, so that's the, uh, what does it say here? It says, yeah, the, uh, yeah, okay, I already said that. So um, the difference between the tight and the loose uh, um, angles on the other side is given by uh, your expectations with respect to the excursions of the beam parameters from the from the nominal values. So if you had a, a, a um, if you had an accelerator where you knew there would never be any uh, excursions of these uh, beam parameters, you uh, could uh, have your loose and your tight fiducial volumes very similar. Um, yeah. So these those are the beam parameters I was talking about. So, uh, I show here a plot, I think it's from last uh, uh, spring, so it's rather old. Uh, and here, so we see the 30 milliradian uh, uh, beam angle, and we see here, that was the first time I saw this thing, the, solar, the compensating solenoid, which at that time was made to take up one meter here, which made, uh, well, you should have your luminosity monitor in front of that. Um, now, luckily, we see now plots where this thing has been shrunk to half a meter, which uh, leaves more room uh, for luminosity monitors. So, I did a kind of bag of envelope study of these things, and I uh, make some assumptions. So that the L star is two meters, that the beam crossing angles is 30 milliradians, that uh, we cannot approach the center of the beam by uh, more than uh, 40 millimeters. Uh, I say probably it's conservative, but what do I know? Um, um, that, and then I put a maximum scattering angle for the uh, barber scattering, which I allow in my detector, to 8 degrees, uh, 140 milliradians. I had to put something. Of course, that has to be understood uh, in the design also of the, on the general detector. Um, then I say that uh, the tight fiducial volume starts 25 millimeters from the calorimeter edge. Well, here I put 15 millimeters Molière radius. Um, um, and then I say that the calorimeter depth is 20 centimeters. Now, I guess one can actually make a more uh, uh, com compact detector. The uh, tungsten Molière, uh, uh, radiation length is only 0.34 centimeters, so 12 to 14 centimeters would probably do. Uh, uh, I run at the Z peak with these stuff. Well, I don't run, but I just make some calculations. And then I studied three different scenarios that we put the front of the uh, luminosity calorimeter at one meter, one meter and 30, and one and a half meter. And one meter and 30 probably uh, corresponds very well to uh, the sketches we have seen today of compensating solenoids uh, between 1.5 and 2 meters. But let's see what the difference this makes. And then I just took a, so Alan presented uh, most of this work already in, uh, in a meeting in uh, December, a FCC -E accelerator meeting, where he reminds us what the luminosity monitor has to do. Well, it has to provide high statistic relative normalization for machine adjustment and fast feedback. It should provide relative normalization for points on the Z line shape for the measurement of MZ and gamma Z. And then we need very precise cross-section measurements for absolute cross-section determination. And here is a reminder of the number of events we, we expect. Well, 10 to the 13 here perhaps has been mentioned. Um, and then he says here that this might uh, be easier for a large angle detector. 
and I was thinking a little bit about that, so that's what I will present for you as well. So, um, what you have to do is to center your fiducial volume around the outgoing beams. So I made some, tried to make some drawings here. So here you see a sketch. This is the quadrupole. This is the uh, luminosity monitor. And here I have put everything nicely, as we remember from lab, centered in the global coordinate system. Um, so here you have the outgoing beam and the incoming beam. But what that means is that this detector here is not centered around the uh, outgoing beam. So if you want, you want your fiducial volume to be centered around the outgoing beam, so the outgoing beam is here, on the face of this luminosity monitor, you would have to define something which is completely asymmetric with respect to the body of the calorimeter. So I guess that's not a very likely scenario. So instead of that, let's um, uh, tilt our coordinate system. So now this coordinate system is no longer the um, main uh, detector coordinate system, but this coordinate system here is centered around the outgoing beam. And then, of course, the incoming beam comes here at some this 30 milliradian uh, angle into this coordinate system. So here you have then the end view. The outgoing beam is here, the incoming beam is here, and you have a nicely centered detector. But that means, of course, that this detector here is not centered in the global coordinate system. So it will cast a shadow on the forward perimeter, what, what you have, uh, which is asymmetric. OK. So, so here are the studies which I did, the 1 meter, 1 meter and 30, 1 meter and, and 50 of the Z. Uh, do, you have, do you have a, a simple explanation that the, the, tech, that the fiducial region has to be centered with the outgoing beam? So, um, what we are living in, we are living in a boosted system. So, we have a, a, a Lorentz boost of the whole physics system with a velocity of 0.015. So, everything will be will be boosted up along the outgoing beam. You, 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 take, you, take a, you take a barbar scattering, which in the uh, lab coordinate system will be parallel to the beam. Well, it'll, it'll still be parallel to the outgoing beam. I see. It's zero, I mean, the, uh, the Q squared equals zero barbar scattering is along with the, the outgoing Yeah, exactly. So for these, uh, these Z coordinates, I can then, with the assumptions I, I made, I summarized on the previous slide, calculate some minimum radius, maximum radius, corresponding minimum scattering angle, maximum scattering angle, the, uh, the uh, cross section in nanobands. I remind you that the peak uh, multi-hydronic cross section is around 30 nanobands, so we are close here. And actually, I might have been conservative, so probably some of these minimum uh, radius and scattering angle could, could be lower, so these numbers could perhaps be somewhat higher. Um, but what you learn from this is that to control things to uh, a precision of 10 to the minus 4, we need to control the front, or the, actually the layer in which we determine the uh, fiducial volume to a precision of 50 microns, 50, 65, 75 microns. Or in other words, this is the half distance between the two luminosity monitors. We have to know to this precision. We have to know the inner uh, radius of the fiducial volume to typically 3 microns and the outer is much more relaxed, so that's not so interesting. So that looks pretty scary, I would say. But then I, I took and looked up what, this is my favorite paper to read when I want to know about uh, precision luminosity monitoring the Opal paper. Um, and they, uh, 
well, they, they, they have a much larger, they, they have a much larger cross-section because they sit at a larger distance and they go to a uh, smaller radius because they don't have the uh, beam crossing angle. So of course, the beam crossing angle puts a limit to how close you can get to the beam if you want a symmetric acceptance. So for, for these parameters, they, they have requirements, at least on the uh, minimal, minimal radius, which are very similar to what, what we uh, would have in our scenario here. And so what did they achieve? They, they achieved 4.4 microns, extremely impressive on this parameter, and 50 microns on the Z for a total luminosity uncertainty of 3 times 4, 3.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So then, sorry about this, I draw this picture just the night after the conference <laughs> dinner. <laughs> it's not very impressive, but... Uh, um, and I do know it's not June, but I couldn't find out how to fix that either yesterday night. <laughs> so, I, just some thoughts about can we go to, to a higher scattering angle? Um, what about trying to use the forward electromagnetic perimeter? Uh, now I drew something very narrow here, but you could open up that. Can we use that for, to determine um, uh, luminosity? So I put in an extra row down here saying that the forward electromagnetic perimeter is probably at three meters. Uh, and then I put some uh, angular range, and that gives us some cross-section. And then it gives us some requirements on the precision. And now, of course, we are much more relaxed. We are factor five more relaxed on the radius, uh, inner radius of our acceptance. Well, I don't know how impressive this is. Uh, for me, it's not obvious that it's any easier to know the inner radius of acceptance on a forward electromagnetic perimeter to 17 microns than it is to know the, the uh, radius uh, of a dedicated small uh, detector to three microns. Uh, the, the luminosity monitor is made as one device, so to say, whereas, well, I think we all know that it's much larger device, the forward electromagnetic perimeter. Um, so is it really feasible to think we can do more precise at large angles? I have my doubts there. But, uh, um, and so the other, one, one other complication is that I'm sure that if we go to larger angles, Gigi want to put some tracking. After all, that's what we have our, uh, uh, our detector for. And there will be services for the uh, silicon detectors, which will have to be taken out. And normally, they run down something along, along, along the beam lines. And they will probably get in the way, shadow into our large angle Baba uh, region. So uh, that will probably also be a complication. And then the last thing I was thinking of is that um, we should not forget that the Z, also the, the S-channel Z exchange, also contributes to the Baba uh, scattering cross-section. So at the peak, this is very small. So I plot here, uh, as a function of scattering angle, the contribution. Well, when you say very small, you always have to remember that we are aiming for a precision of 10 to the minus 4, which is really a scary number. Here's 20 times what we're aiming for. Of course, this can be calculated, and this might not be any showstopper at all. Now, here you have, uh, for the, the different angles, I don't know if you can see that, I can hardly, it says 50 milliradians, 90, 130, 170, and 210. So with the large, this, this thing here, we are up into the forward electromagnetic perimeter. Here we are down in in the normal luminosity monitor uh, domain. So this is the contribution from, well, this is um, interference term between the Z, S channel Z and the T channel uh, elast elastic scattering. And well, this is an effect which can 
well, it's approaching 10%. So if we want to measure luminosity to 10 to the minus 4, we have to control this at least to 10 to the minus 3 out of this correction here. Is that trivial? I don't know. I had hoped that our Krakow people, uh, friends, the B.H. Lumi people would have been here. They could tell me. One thing which uh, I just uh, was thinking about is that, well, you have a, a cross-section which varies quite dramatically from down here to up here. So you will get, I guess, radiative uh, return to this peak here. So if you're running up here uh, at the peak, you will have, even in the barber scattering cross-section, radiative return up to this thing that we also have to uh, know to very high precision. So very, theoretically, I would think the higher we go in angles, the, the more complicated uh, things become. Okay, so what I then found here uh, was uh, a sketch. So what our friends, uh, this is the SID detector planning of, and they say our goal is to measure the luminosity normalization with an accuracy of several times 10 to the minus 4 for a square root of S500 uh, GV. Now, okay, so they have a luminosity monitor. I don't know how clear it is to see, but it's sitting here, and it's sitting between 1 meter and 56 and 1 meter and 70. It's 14.3 uh, centimeters deep. And this is actually not very far from what we are thinking of with the compensating solenoids we, we have seen today. We uh, would then, this would be 1 meter and 50, and we would go further, uh, a little bit closer to the, to the interaction point. Of course, if, I mean, this all depends also on the global uh, B field in the detector, because now we were, we just heard that if we have a four Tesla field, they need a 16 Tesla compensating solenoid. Well, then if we had only a two Tesla field and we could have a 16 Tesla compensating solenoid, then perhaps that would only take 25 centimeters. So there can be a lot of trade-off here, which is not uh, clear yet. Okay, so let me try to, to conclude. So I think, to my mind, the only but so LAP has demonstrated very beautifully that it is possible to do uh, normalization to uh, the 10 to the minus 4 level, few times 10 to the minus 4. And all the LAP detectors used uh, very precisely uh, uh, constructed and monitored calorimeters at small angles. The situation at T-Lab is somewhat more challenging, and I think the main challenge is clear, that is that the monitors are being pushed closer to the IP due to machine constraints. And a, a smaller challenge is the crossing angle. I don't think that's the main point, but this is really the, uh, the main point, that is that the, 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 we, we, we push the, the monitors close to the IP. So it's not obvious for me at least that one can obtain higher absolute precisions at large angles. Uh, so uh, I think the conclusion should be that we should try as hard as we can to not make the small angles solution impossible. We should, in, in everything we do, thinking about the general detector layout and the compensating solenoid and everything, always have the luminosity monitoring uh, in the back of our heads because I think this is the safe way of measuring absolute luminosity. It's proven, and we know that this can be done. Uh, to reach, so we have said that we will reach 1 times 10 to the minus 4. I don't know, but, but at least LEP has, has proven that we can reach a few times 10 to the minus 4. Um, so just a, a list here of things. So parameter to be defined. So the, the main parameter to 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 be defined is actually this, uh, how much space, how close are we to the IP. And I think that's, that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Did you have a question? No.
Right, so you were talking about uh, an 80 millirad to 100 and something millirad uh, um, luminometer. Um, did, do you consider also a very small angle luminometer, 20 to 30 millirad, which is going to go around the beam pipe? Uh, I'm thinking about the, you know, a la Delphi solution. No, I haven't That's thought you. about that. So, so now we have, so that becomes even more complicated because now we, so you're thinking about something sitting behind the quadrupoles. Something, yeah, something like that. I haven't thought it's about that at all. Around, around the IP, very small, yeah. very easy to... Because uh, if you want something, of course, this what, 30 milliradians here puts a limit to how, how close you can get a symmetric acceptance of this type to the beam. You cannot get closer than 30 milliradians. Yeah, so definitely. if you have a very small one, you can go around one of the two beam pipes, the exiting, the red beam pipe, for instance, yeah. How much space is there here? This is uh, one, so. Yeah, it's gonna be between your uh, blue and your yellow, I think, in this, yeah, there. Yes, Wait, yeah, we, this, we, we this, is, this is uh, a few millimeters uh, large. Oh, this, this, there's there's not a few much, centimeters, not, I think there is a few centimeters. A few centimeters, yeah. But we, we, we can discuss it later. So yeah. I have another comment, which is, uh, uh, you remember at uh, Delphi, we also, we had this mask yeah. To that masks the inner acceptance. And that's a very easy way to get accuracies of one micron or less. So the, to define the inner acceptance is, you, you wanted two or three microns, I think this is not an issue. We can very easily do it with the tungsten mask as we did it at Delphi. Yes, and then you cannot use the asymmetric acceptance, but then of course, then you'll have to monitor your beam uh, position and so on. Yeah. That, that is a possibility to think of as well, yes. But it wasn't as precise. No, I'm, I'm also a little bit uh, nervous. The, the mask was not as precise as a uh, carefully designed uh, calorimeter. No. Because you get all the uh, you know, grazing effects and things like that. <coughs> you, you made a very important point, which is uh, that is a much easier to control at the level of the micron a, a, a small scale structure than a large scale structure. At LEP we have demonstrated we are able to do that with the luminosity monitoring. We had a statistic for the BABA, but in the case of SCCE, we have the problem of acceptance for precision measurement over the entire apparatus. So the problem we have to solve anyway uh, for the rest of the apparato. So we have a, a problem to solve. How we can control the acceptance and the position of the elements of our detector at a, at a, a different scale, which is over the entire apparatus. And it is not clear how to solve. So I have, I, have, I have two comments, um, looking at it a bit from an ILC perspective, which of course in, in some ways is different. One is, um, if I look at your sketch, it appears that you, will, you are planning or thinking of having your luminometer, the, the Z phase of your luminometer at significantly smaller values than the rest of the detector, the NCAP, ECAP, for example, so it sort of reach it inside the main detector. Yeah, from necessity. Because right, from the, the, I understand. But this, at least for the ILC, was found to be a major problem because you basically introduce into your detector something which lights up uh, very much with you know, particles just hitting it back, scattering into your detector, et cetera, et cetera. So that's something one has to really study, I think, to understand. It may be quite different here because you have different beam parameters, but it's certainly something to, to worry about. And uh, a second point, I think, also for the ILC, we did look at the possibility of using the sort of big scale structures as a, as a measurement device for luminosity. And um, I think it can be done, but it's going to be extremely expensive because you will have to, as you say, control your big scale devices to a very, very low, very, very high level of accuracy, which is hard. And uh, even though, of course, you have to also for the other measurements control your large scale calorimeters to a fairly good uh, um, error, it's still significantly larger than you would need for luminometer. So I don't think it's a very viable option. No. Uh so, and, and then, if you think about normalization, I guess it's different uh, at this, I don't know, this, this thing about the uh, Z interference term, that's of course only important if you're running at the Z. 
at other energies, that's not an issue. But I don't know at, uh, well, yeah, perhaps it is. But around the Z, you have this very uh, abruptly varying cross-section, which I would think uh, was a theoretical problem. It might even be at small angles, because the, the effect is not uh, negligible. And if you want to reach uh, very, very low, Also, in view on what Tis and Mike said, I think that this should be really a project that, that lives inside the design of the interaction region. Uh, I mean, should be the, the, the part of the interaction region design, because uh, uh, what you said is true also for other elements uh, that are inside, inside the central detector. And uh, clearly, the integration of this, of the luminometer with the, with the with the, with the central region is a, is a challenge, and I, I mean, though I understand what Roberto said that it would be nice to control all the structure at that level. I mean, this would I would put this in the box of the redundancy, and not uh, I still insist that to have to have a small a small angle device that can do that also. Yeah. Also, this, uh, this, uh, this energy, so this is extremely fast, so it's, this can be, uh, you can monitor luminosity precisely, uh, similar to what in Aleph used to do with Big Al. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's all the beauties of this device. Other questions? But of course, it's not only the IP region, it also has to play with the general detector. From the integration point of view, where to find the things, where to find the clean area, this is something that should live, in my opinion, inside the, the, the point one cone that I was discussing with Mike, and this was also one of the, of the points when I was discussing with him. I mean, this is something that has to live with other uh, machine elements nearby, and uh, its, so the, its location and mm. the way as all the things is rooted should be should be part of this. This would ensure to have the clean angle, because otherwise... Uh... Yeah, but so, so, so this thing here, as I rem said, that of course we were reminded that of course this, this will throw radiation out the corners here. And, and, but furthermore, it's of course asymmetric in, in with respect to the global uh, coordinate system. I understand. But the physics is also asymmetric. Yes. So, uh, no, no, you explained very clearly to me before, yes. Just to address uh, Roberto's question, I think you should make your detector without cracks, or as little cracks as you can. Uh, you end up having to define precisely the inner radius of the luminometer. So this is exactly what we're doing. And then the shadow, of course there's a shadow, uh, but you can probably establish it with the events themselves. Um, the, the question I have here is, why don't you put detector inside. I mean, you, you, you've made a hole in the middle. Yeah. And I do, I do not see why there isn't detector. detector around the beam side. Yeah, and then you... you the, uh, from the, from the no, 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 no. I think th there, there's, I don't see any reason not to make uh, the uh, inner space smaller. I, I agree to that, and, and, uh, but I'm not sure we want to use that to determine luminosity. I mean, the, cl the, the, larger, no, the further you go down in radius, the more extreme your precision will have to be. But to, to close the detect uh, hermetically, you, you might want to fill up that space. I had that in a talk which I actually gave in June. I had filled out this space. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> But the, the, the thing which needs to be uh, cut with a precision of one micron is the silicon detector inside. It's not the tungsten oh, no. itself. I, I understand that. And um, yeah, one micron, yeah. You have to make it so temperature will soon make it. I mean, there are many things to take care of. It's very impressive to read this Opal paper, how much work it has been. Then. Comments? Do you think we can have the coffee break a little bit earlier? Yes. So, <laughs> I thank again Morgans.
and so we stop for coffee break until 25 past.